Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be unboxing something really unusual I found on eBay. Inside this box is a Brass Berlin LocoWorks inspection car vehicle. I don't really know what it is, but in any case, it just looked kind of interesting, and uh, I decided just to place a couple bids, and I ended up winning it. So now we're going to go have a look, see what exactly it is I bought here. So here's the brand, I don't know very much about them, I guess they're mostly a brass manufacturer. There's uh, more details on the side here, apparently they're made in Korea. And uh, this model, despite being made of brass, is actually not that old. You can see it was produced in 2000. So anyways, let's get this thing out of the box and see what exactly we're dealing with here. It appears to come with a brass shovel and broom. Here's the first part, and it is the trailer. I don't have a clue what this thing was used for. I don't know if they actually used these in the real world. It looks like something that might have been produced originally uh, in real life in the 20s at some point. Looks like you've uh, got some uh, welding equipment on the back. Very unusual. And then uh, right here is the main attraction. And, like, this thing is just so strange. I really don't know what to say about it. You've got two identical figures on the inside, a sack of who knows what, and uh, surprisingly, this is actually a powered model. So I really don't know how this is going to run, but uh, I reckon that we should uh, take it over to the track and uh, see how it operates. I don't expect anything terrific. I mean, there's not much contact area here, but uh, let's give it a go. I tell you what, of all things I've ever unboxed here on the channel, this is probably the strangest. Well, it doesn't really look quite right, but let's give it some power here. So far, I'm not seeing anything on the track. Oh, heard it for a second there. Yeah, there it goes. Let's see if it will do an entire lap. Man, it's doing it, but those bearings just sound horrible. I'm guessing that this thing has not been used in quite a while. I mean, it's just running like crap, so uh, I guess we'll bring it over to the workbench and see if we can uh, improve it a bit, because this is not good performance. So this thing really does not seem to be loving life, so we'll try to disassemble it and see if we can oil those bearings on the motor. I've never disassembled one of these before, so this is going to be a first, but uh, I reckon that if we just remove a few screws, this top part will probably come apart. I don't know. I think if we remove this screw, we might be able to get access to the rest of the drive. All right, and there we go. And wow, look at that. This thing actually has a five-pole motor. I would not have expected that. So this is really the same kind of motor they would have been using an N-scale locomotive, so I'll have to be careful not to give this thing too much voltage, but uh, I'm guessing that nobody has serviced this for quite a while. Uh, it does seem to be turning okay though, so that's a good sign. So we'll uh, get some oil in this thing and hopefully that will fix it up. I would like to have a look at the commutator, but these smaller motors are kind of unforgiving when it comes to be taken apart, so I don't know if it's a great idea. I think we'll just give it some oil and see if that uh, fixes it up first. So we'll add a little bit of oil here, here, spot there. Throw a little bit of oil into the bearings while we're at it as well. Yeah, I think we'll uh, take it over to the track and just see if we can get it to run around the layout a bit and work that oil into the gears. See if that made any difference. Well, that to me seems about a million times better. Let's take you back over to the bench. We'll get the uh, shell thrown back on there. We'll also uh, tidy up the wheels because uh, they could use some work as well. All right, let's go run this thing now. 
That's more like it. Let's find out what the uh, pulling capacity is now. Test number one with a single freight car. No problem. Apparently it can handle that too. I think this third one's gonna be a bit of a push. <laughs> it's struggling, but uh, yeah. Okay, so that's about its uh, about its maximum right there. But still, it's kind of impressive uh, for the size of vehicle. Now that we've got this thing running half decent, I think we should just have some fun with it and run it around the layout. Instead of the conventional circuit though, I wanna run it on the mountain layout. Not all trains can uh, actually handle the corners and hills on it, but I figure with the short wheelbase, it should be just fine. I do want to uh, integrate this layout into the rest of it a little bit more in the coming months. I actually wanna add a track off the main line, which will connect up here and maybe add some switches so trains can pass back over. That way we'll actually be able to use this more often, but uh, for the time being, we'll just have some fun with this little rail vehicle and just see how it performs on here. Now let's just go get it some power. Well folks, I think that that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed getting to unbox and work on this thing today. Although I've got to say, I think this will have been one of the strangest pieces of equipment I've ever worked on. It's just so bizarre. I really couldn't find a whole lot about it online either, so I'm guessing that it was probably part of some sort of limited run. You know, the build quality seems okay and it runs half decent, so I'm glad it's not total junk, because when I bought this thing I really had no idea what exactly I was buying but uh, it still remains kind of a mystery other than that. So if you know anything about this locomotive or this piece of rail equipment, please share it in the comments because I really would be curious to find out more about it. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.